smoking hot wife. Just parted the Red Sea with a stick. Hashtag humbled. <laughs> you know what? It's like, we're like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, this, I can't believe you. You know, and, oh, and, you, oh, she's doing that. Oh, he's doing that. Oh, you got, oh, OMG, BFF, selfie. Come on, selfie. Selfie. Oh, y'all ready for a selfie? We're doing a selfie right now. I mean, y'all, look, y'all try ready? Come on. Because we OMG, right? I mean, oh my gosh, BFF, right? You're my best friend. So we got to do a selfie. Oh, wait, I got to get the flash on. Flash. It's on. Okay, we're going to do it this way. All right, ready? Y'all need to follow me on Twitter. I tried to do a selfie. I tried to do a selfie. But what I'm saying is, it's just like, mate, could you, I understand our jobs, all that, I Twitter, all that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to say is, could you just disconnect from it a little bit more in these next three weeks? Television shows, I'm not telling you to stop watching TV, but you know, you might want to just stop watching some shows or six hours of TV a day. Or if you watch two hours of news a day, how about cut it down to, 30 minutes for just three weeks. I promise you this, even if you stop, like take a three-day fast from the news, guess what? I promise you the world will still continue. Society will go on without you knowing everything that's happening over the next three days. And here's what else you'll find. When you start fasting, you'll turn on one of your TV shows and you'll be like, why am I watching this? Because what's happening is God it, you're beginning to experience more of God's presence and his joy. It's like you're, you're feasting on the presence of God. It's a big difference with New Testament fasting and Old Testament fasting. In the Old Testament, they didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So when they fasted in the Old Testament, like their mentality was the principle's the same, consecrating yourself to God, limiting your food or the type of food you take in, consecrating yourself, you know, connecting, disconnecting. The principle's the same. But in the Old Testament, they would like fast to change God's mind. Like, let's all fast. Maybe he won't bring judgment. Here's the, the good news. In the New Testament, we don't fast to change God's mind. We know God's already forgiven us. God's a healer. God's a miracle worker. Jesus has already suffered judgment for us. We fast to change our minds so that we can receive the goodness that God already has for us in Christ. Or are you, you see... We have, we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon them like from the outside, but they didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. So when we shut down carnality and things like that and we feast ourselves on God, His presence starts welling up and in His presence is fullness of joy. So you'll find, you'll be on Twitter, you're like, ugh, why am I involved? I don't want to deal with that drama. Do, do you see what I'm saying? I'm watching this show. I, I just, it, what happens is, God changes you from the inside out and you start becoming a little bit more disconnected from carnality and more connected to God. Unbelief goes out, faith comes in and the impossible becomes possible. But you got to have a clear plan. Get that clear plan. And then that brings me to number two, stick to it. Be firm in your commitment. You've got to be firm in your commitment. Let me give you this Scripture right here, Joshua 4, 3. This is when Joshua is taking the children of Israel to capture Jericho. This is not Moses in the Red Sea, you know, hashtag blessed or humbled or whatever. This is Joshua leading the children of Israel across the Jordan to capture Jericho. He's leading them into the promised land, the land that represents freedom. How many of you are ready for freedom in these next 21 days? And remember, it's not just freedom from like the boy, it's not just freedom from bad habits, oppression, sin, all this kind of stuff. It's also freedom to. It's freedom to the goodness of God, freedom to joy. Can you imagine that man and his son, going back to the story of Matthew chapter 17, what the experience was like when they, like, they had their first family dinner? 
Or he could have a coherent conversation. Can you imagine that, that dad and wife as they go to bed that night knowing that their son's not going to go try to go out and maybe harm himself? Can you imagine the first time that that father was able to take his boy like fishing? See, it's not just freedom from, it's freedom to. See, Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. He says, I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. In this next season, God's gonna bring you into a freedom to, freedom to peace, freedom to joy, freedom to experiencing the blessings of God, freedom to a more focused life, freedom to a more effective life, freedom to a more healthy life, a, more, a, a life full of vitality. But you gotta be firm. So here's what this scripture says here. Uh, uh, Joshua told him, look, take for yourself 12 stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you are tonight. So here's what he said. He basically said the, the priest went through the Jordan and they stopped in the middle and they planted their feet firm. This was symbolic. The river, God had parted the Jordan River and there were walls of water on each side. On each side. And while the children of Israel passed through, the priest stood there firm. It represents, it's a symbol of standing firm in your commitment to see the supernatural power of God happen in your life so that freedom will come, so that the promised land will come. Are you following me? So Joshua said this, the children of Israel passed through. He said, look, priest, I want you to go and take some of those stones, take 12 stones representing the 12 tribes of Israel. I want you to take those stones from where your feet stood firm. Everybody say firm where your commitment was firm. It was firm, not any place in the river. Take it from where your commitment was firm. If you have a firm commitment, I want you to take those stones, bring them out on the other side of the river in the, air, in the promised land where there's freedom. And what I want you to do is, this is what'll happen. It'll make a monument that's a testimony to the supernatural power of God that brings his people into freedom so that when your kids and your kids' kids and the next generation and your grandchildren, when they come by and they see this pile of stones, they'll say, what is that? And you can, you can tell them and point them to the time when God delivered his people supernaturally, how the supernatural power of God is always in play no matter what you're believing God for. Watch, this fast church, it's a time where our commitment needs to be firm. And the miracles that God does in your life, that story is, is going to become a stone that is a testimony to the miraculous working power of God. Your kids will see. I can't tell you how many times I talk to people. Oh, God healed me of this in the 2009 fast. Oh, yeah, God saved our marriage in the 2011 fast. Oh, yeah, my family came to Christ in the 2008 fast. You are going to have a miracle testimony in the 2014 fast. And it's going to speak to future generations. My kids know, man, when this time of the year comes, get ready because the junk food's going out but the miracle working power of God is coming in. We set up a testimony, a legacy for future generations. I wanna let you know in 2014, God is gonna take your story, he's gonna make it a stone. Some of you, your marriages are gonna get healed. Some of you, your bodies are gonna get healed. Some of you, you're gonna get a financial breakthrough. Some of you, you're gonna get delivered from oppression and, and besetting sins and addiction. God is gonna bring you in a freedom from and also into a freedom to, and you're gonna have a stone, a testimony to the supernatural power of God that you will never forget that your kids will never forget, that newcomers will never forget. But you've gotta be firm in your commitment. Everybody say, be firm. Be firm. Man, just tell you, here's what I tell myself. I got, when I get tempted, you know what I'm saying? I think to myself, I got the whole rest of the year to eat a hamburger. <laughs> Can I give God three weeks? Jay-Z and Beyonce did. Can I give three weeks to God to get freed up and experience? Oh, you know, and that's why, look, you gotta be, you can't be like, as soon as you feel a little fatigued or you smell, you know, you're, and believe me, you will smell. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you start fasting, you think you smell good now, your smell becomes like a bear. I'm talking from 100 miles. You will smell it, man. You'll smell something cooking and you're like, 
And if you don't catch yourself, you'll be like, you'll turn into a bear. But you can't give in. Oh, I'm a little weak. Oh, I'm fatigued. Oh, I forgot my juice today. That's why you got to plan all that stuff. You got to think, you got to prepare your, your veggies, your smoothies, or, you know, whatever you're doing. You got to think it through, but don't give in at the first little headache, the first little fatigue, the first little hunger pain. Guess what? Hunger pains will subside. They'll go away. Don't worry. A new one will come, <laughs> but that one will go away. But here's the good news. Guess what? We do this together. We're all in it together. It helps hold us one another accountable, but be firm in your commitment. What if the priest would have stopped being firm there and thought, oh, well, enough people have gone by. We'll just roll out of here. And that water would have come down there. What, 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 if, what, if, what if Daniel would have not fasted for 21 days? What if he had bailed out on the 17th day? The miracle came on the 21st day. See, that's why what we do is we start this Sunday, make this afternoon, you know, early this evening, make that your last meal. And then in three weeks, we, we, we celebrate and you eat after, you know, the 12-12 service or when, around the time when you're last meal was. Don't worry. It'll be just in time for the Super Bowl. How about that? <laughs> Some of you will become Super Bowl fans, even though you could care less about football or who's playing, just because you know I'm going to be able to eat during the Super Bowl. <laughs> be firm in your commitment. The final thing I'm going to pray with this, believe God for great things. Believe God for great things. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 17, listen, say this mountain, move from here to there and nothing will be impossible for you. Believe God for a breakthrough, for a freedom. Like I said, those things that seem impossible, the impossible will become possible as we commit ourselves to God with a clear plan, firm in our commitment, believing him 21 days of prayer and fasting. Pray with me. Father, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do in our lives over these next three weeks. Now, real quickly, how many of you will do this? Watch. You'll, you'll do this. You'll say, Stovall, I'm going to get my plan, whatever, some way, shape, or form, some form of the Daniel fast. I am, I'm in, man. I'm in these next three weeks. I'm fasting. I'm ready for miracles. I'm ready for a breakthrough. Raise your hand right now. I want to see that hand go up. If their hand's not up, then um, grab their hand and if they're next to you and put it up and all that kind of stuff. Awesome, you put those hands down. How many of you would say this? Bow your heads real quickly, one more time. Please, I'm, I'm gonna ask, try to, no one leave. It's, it's, a, it's a sacred time of our service. If you're in here and you'd say, Stovall, I need a fresh start with God today. I just wanna make sure it's a new year. I wanna just start the year off right. I wanna make sure Jesus is Lord of my life. I need a fresh start with God. I've been too disconnected from God. And I just want to surrender my life to him and put him first in 2014. I, I, I need a fresh start with God. Would you just raise your hand if you'd say yes to that? So many hands are going up. Say, yes, I need a fresh start with God. I want to commit or recommit my life to Christ. I need to do that today, Stovall. Raise it one more time at all of our locations. That's not for me. That's for God. You can put that hand down. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. And if you raised your hand to surrender your life to Christ or to recommit your life to Christ, I want you to repeat this prayer and mean it uh, with your heart. And church, uh, I'm gonna ask all of us to repeat this prayer as well to kind of help along instead of me just leading them in this prayer. It's kind of like we all help lead people in this prayer of, of surrendering their hearts to Christ. So say this and mean it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Jesus, I repent of my sin and I trust you as my Lord and Savior. I thank you for forgiveness, for everlasting life, for a fresh start in this new year. In Jesus' name. Now let me pray for you. Father, I pray for each and every person, Lord, as nearly all of us have committed to this season of prayer and fasting to the next 21 days. I just thank you, Lord. Help us. Give us that clear plan. Give us grace for the firm commitment. And Lord, give us grace to help, you, help us to believe you for big things, great things, awesome things in our lives. And we just thank you in advance for the miracles that you're gonna do. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. And